Hello, my name is Kayo and I'm a queer Buddhist. Hello, my name is Oliver and I'm a trans guy who makes videos about LGBTQIA plus people where they get to talk about anything that they want that somehow relates to them being queer. I just came back from a trip around Malaysia and Singapore. And in Singapore, I was invited to a beautiful temple one morning by Kyle. Hi, my name is Kyle. My surname is a bit more interesting because it's Neo. So it's like the Matrix Neo. And I'm a queer Buddhist. So by saying I'm a queer Buddhist doesn't mean there's any difference between how I practice Buddhism. But I just want to make sure there's a queer representation of you can be Buddhist, but yet spiritual. This is how Kyle identifies. I see myself as a pronoun he and him and some say fabulous but I'm also queer so that means that I'm not entirely like super super masculine because at my, I believe that we all have different sides of how we want to represent ourselves sometimes we just have to have both yeah and then my sexual identity is gay which means happy as well so it suits my personality being gay and happy Kyle sometimes feels a bit lonely as a queer Buddhist. We don't really have a good representation of a queer Buddhist because all of us are still hiding very discreet in the places that we attend to. Like for example, if I go for a Dharma talk, or if I go to the temple, where it's a bit contradicting because, you know, it practices a lot of compassion. For Buddhism, we practice a lot of compassion. But people still find it very hard to come out as a queer Buddhist, so most of the time it's the cultural influence that we cannot be out there. But I'm hoping that with more and more people coming out as a queer Buddhist, it is okay for them to be queer and also to be a Buddhist. And not just that, but we are also equipped with the Buddha nature, which is spoken in the teachings of the Buddha, that everyone has the Buddha nature to be awakened. So it feels like we don't really have to feel there is this obstruction towards our cultivation or understanding the Buddhism, but it's more about how when we let go of the part of hiding ourselves, things come easier for us to see and to feel the environment actually help us in how we can grow as a queer Buddhist. So is Buddhism as a religion inclusive towards LGBTQIA plus people? So it's very interesting because in the beginning of um, in a Buddha's lifetime, there is no scriptures or there is no defining um, teachings of the Buddha that says that homosexuality is a sin in Buddhism or there is actually nothing against homosexuality. But as much as it grew up, uh, you know, the expanded, the Buddhism spread to all different countries a lot of times the cultural influence has a very big part of imposing the idea that homosexuality is wrong because having anal sex is very wrong. So there's a lot of part where people misjudge that anal sex thing as a sexual misconduct. But in actual fact, Buddhism is very, very welcoming and accepting. And if you go to any temples, the main practice a Buddhist should have is to have compassion. So if someone in any Buddhist community or in any organization or temples that you feel that you are discriminated, then that is not Buddhism. That shouldn't be a Buddhist thing to do because we're not taught or understand to find the differences on good, who is bad, who is good. There's no such thing. There's more or less on what is wholesome, what is not wholesome, what is virtuous. So whatever that you practice that helps you with your cultivation of Buddhism and the teachings, that should be the right way to go and we don't really have to use hate. Kyle is the head of an organization for queer Buddhists in Singapore. I run Rainbow Bodhi Singapore, which is a Buddhist spiritual friendship group. It was founded by Apante Akariko, which is an Australian monk. And then uh, Rainbow Bodhi started like about maybe Singapore started about two years ago, uh, roughly two years ago. I was not out there yet until when I run the organization because someone has to be the spokesperson, right? You cannot be like, oh, I'm, I run Rainbow Lee, but please do not take my picture, you know? So it, it gets interesting because when I was out there trying to, you know, show people that I'm a queer Buddhist, 80% was super, super welcoming. I would say 10% don't know what to do. And there is 10% of it that actually feel not, that doesn't sit well with them. 
so last year finally at one incident there's one incident where i was talking to two very established people who are in charge of a buddhist organization they told me that well what buddha never said that it's right to be homosexual but i said that buddha never said it's wrong to be homosexual and maybe buddha also never said being straight is also okay in the scripture so that is a part of me where i felt like um a bit of discriminating because they say that we're not discriminating you but we actually don't support in what you do so i'm very perplexed i'm so perplexed and confused what that sentence means but i also know that in what we do what we say and what we think a lot of times people have a different understanding of it and the last thing i want is to impose my beliefs but i send them the loving kindness that anyone would, should deserve to and just say that oh well that is your you know your view we accept it and maybe we don't accept it but we just say that we just respect you as that person with that view so for my part is very interesting because that journey makes me realize that how much work we have to do in buddhist community to make sure that this doesn't happen to my community rain buddhi has a lot of different things going on so rain buddhi singapore is actually a group that we I would hope to implement more on the like temple tours. We have a can share study groups that um talks about dharma which is the teaching of the buddha. We so we come together. We listen or watch a uh, one buddhist episodes of like maybe a teaching and then after that we go to a breakout group and then we discuss and reflect on what do you think this teaching is about, you know, how to how and then how can you apply these teachings to your life? How is it useful and beneficial? So we have a care and share study group. We also do somehow like a museum tours, and upcoming we have a tea appreciation. So we sit down and drink tea, but using tea as a medium to talk about dharma, the teaching, the philosophy of Buddhism, and we have sometimes invite people, allies to come and join us to do yoga for us. We are actually pretty fun people, you know. Now, most people think Buddhists are very boring you know not when you come to the lgbtq buddhist group yeah yeah so this is what we usually do now oh we have a mindfulness workshop that is based on the teachings of the four immeasurables for brahma viharas so we wanted to do this so that hopefully you know the lgbtq group can find a certain kind of skills on how to use mindfulness to deal with what they're going through Buddhism has some queer coded figures. So there's a lot of queer figures like you know as we see like you know the celestial beings called the devas you know they are usually very colorful very happy going they have a sense of creativity in music entertainment so when you give offerings to the buddha it feels that everybody feels that pride of rest enjoy taking it as a part of like i'm using that happiness from my game from Buddhism and I give it up in terms of expression through music through arts so this love of like there's not like queer like buddha or like a queer bodhisattva or queer arahat but because what they do is because when they are enlightened right so they that part doesn't matter anymore but what I'm just saying is that you know the part of the maybe some of the monks are queer and then you know they probably have the understanding of the dharma and but they still have the ability to understand the nature of the buddhist teaching or oh, abu kitishvara sometimes can be seen as a non binary because he takes on the female forms the persona of the feminine compassion but yet his statue is always in a very male solid body and chest you know so there's a lot of non binary kind of like uh, interpretation interpretation that we can see from Avalokiteshvara as well. Let's end the video with a message from Kyle to you. In Buddhism we talk about interdependence. That means that your existence do not come by just your own independently without the help of others. You go through your parents to bring you up. I did notice that every morning when you eat your breakfast, that breakfast comes with 10,000 pair of hands. People who grow the food for you, people who transport the food for you, people who carry this into the supermarket for you. So it's all in the dependence. And so in this world that we are, as much as some people might disagree that homosexual is actually a sin, uh, not a sin, 
we have to know that we are all interdependent to each other, the world, the climate and everything. So the best way we can do is to just be nice to each other. If we wake up every day, I cannot just be a little bit nicer and kinder to people. I don't know what is the meaning or the purpose of living in this world then, because each of us depend on each other. So let's see this as a unity of how the diversity comes together to bring this into this amazing peace and harmony. Yeah. That's all. If you enjoyed watching that video, please like, comment, subscribe and share the video. I really appreciate you showing your love in that way. If you also want to support the channel financially, that's possible via Patreon, but really no pressure. See you next time.